So how would you feel if your neighbors raised chickens or goats in their backyard? Next on Food and Wine this week, Leslie Sabaco tells us about the growing trend of raising small livestock at home in cities and suburbs. Thanks, Belva. Have you noticed that life on the farm is coming to the city? You may have seen vegetables popping up amongst the flower beds in your neighbor's garden, or a few more bees flying around recently. Homeowners are installing hives in their backyards. And if you walk the streets, you might spy chickens or ducks tucked away securely behind fences, even a goat or two. This reflects the increasing number of urban residents unwilling to leave their city homes for the country, but who want fresh eggs, milk, and produce planted, picked, and raised by their own hands. Joining me is the director of the San Francisco Department of Animal Care and Control, Rebecca Katz, and Oakland-based residential farmer and author, Novella Carpenter. Now, Novella, you wrote a best-selling book called Farm City, um, sort of giving your trials and tribulations of starting a, an urban farm. Um, how did you get started doing this? Well, you know, I started to wonder where the food was coming from in my grocery store. Um, you know, what, what what was going on with those chickens, for instance? You know, were they in a cage? Were they running around? Um, and so, and this is in Seattle, I started to keep chickens just because it just made me feel better. I knew exactly how they were living. Um, and then I started keeping bees just because it's so nice. The homemade honey is so good. Um, and then, of course, it spiraled. Um, so I started keeping ducks and then pigs and then goats now. And what do your neighbors think? <laughs> do they like it? <laughs> the neighbors don't mind, actually. I think that they, it depends on your neighborhood. Right. Um, but my neighborhood is, um, is a very interesting um, multi-ethnic one in Oakland. Um, and so people are very, um, you know, they oftentimes want to come over and tell me like, hey, I used to be a goat herder in Yemen, <laughs> you know, and I'll be like, wow, cool. You right. know, tell me more. So it's a really, it's been a great thing for the community, actually. And it is, I think, it's not about the back to the land sort of movement in the 60s and 70s. This is really about forming a sense of community in the city, isn't it? Exactly. Well, you know, my parents were back to the land hippies, and part of their, you know, biggest gripe with, with trying to do that was the loneliness of living out way out in the woods somewhere. Um, and so this way I get my city and I get my country fix. And a little rock and roll. Too. Mm, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> and Rebecca, I mean, what are the sort of the legal ramifications of doing this? Because, you know, when you say I keep bees and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I have kids and 20,000 swarming bees around or something, yeah. you know, what, how do people approach that? Well, I think what Novella was talking about with her neighbors really not complaining, actually enjoying it, it goes, it speaks to Novella and how she's keeping them. Um, keeping the place clean and keeping the animals well and keeping them happy and the uh, keeping the yard clean is is a big piece of that when we hear complaints complaints from the public either coming to us or the health department or the police department for noise it's because people aren't keeping that in mind that they need to And then you get things like rats and raccoons and all sorts of, yeah, of unwanted animals, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Certainly mm -hmm. that uh, wildlife can be drawn in from animals and plants of uh, food sources for them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't want people to just think like urban farming, great, I'm going to do it and right. like tomorrow buy a bunch of goats. And so I'm always very cautious about these things. Um, and, you know, rats are can be a huge problem, especially for people who keep chickens um, because that food they love, rats love chicken food. Wow. Um, and so my thing, I teach classes um, about keeping chickens and raising goats. And I'm always like, never just leave food out for right. your animals because other animals that you we'll don't want in your backyard are going to show up. What sort of begs the question? question, is this a trend or is this a fad? And when you look at it as sort of a fad, you know, people I'm sure go, oh yeah, let's do it. And then they give up the animals and then you, you know, mm. see them in animal control and you, you know, it's, it becomes a bigger yeah. issue, right? We do see some animals coming in. Um, certainly when chickens come in, they're adopted very quickly. People mm -hmm. want the fresh eggs. So um, that doesn't become such an issue for us, but I think it's important that just like any animal, when somebody brings an animal home, they should know what they're getting into, whether right. it's a food source or a companion animal, that there's care involved. 
And let's talk about education because mm -hmm. that's really whether you're planting your own garden and growing your own produce or whether you're raising animals, yeah. it's really about education, isn't it? It really is and there's some great programs in San Francisco, Garden for the Environment teaches a whole chicken raising class. Um, I teach a goat class at the Biofuel Oasis in Berkeley. Um, so those kinds of places just sort of give people a reality check. Right. And especially for the goats, I'll be like, you know what, you guys, don't just do it because here's all of the things you have to buy, first of all, before you keep goats, and here's what they're gonna eat, and you know, all of these issues that are gonna come up. Um, and it just sort of, because I think city people a lot of times don't, they're not in touch with sort of animal husbandry, yeah. <laughs> and so they think it's gonna be easy, and then they find out, oh my God, it's so much work. It is, because mm -hmm. you have to put a lot of things into it. You have to understand so many things. For example, chickens, my neighbor has chickens, mm -hmm you know, they, they die of diseases. And yeah. so how do you, you know, you still have to know quite a few things, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a huge, a huge thing. And, and you know, it's, it's sad when people um, get animals and then, you know, something bad happens to them. You know, like a raccoon attack is the classic right. um, because they didn't build a coop that was safe at night. Um, so it's not hard. It's traumatize just, your children. I know, <laughs> traumatize your children with the carnage, you know. Right, right. Um, but, and so those kind of, you just have to do, you just have to basic education and then you'll be okay. Yeah. So in terms of uh, the approach from the city, what are sort of the pros and cons for people looking at doing Doing this. Well, I think the pros are what Nabelle is talking about, having animals back there for, um, whether it's for food or for um, fertilizer. I mean, I had a pet duck as a kid and our garden never grew so lushly as it did then. Yeah, right, right. Um, but there's also, they draw in predators and mm -hmm. raccoons particularly are very strong and so you have to reinforce any coop, um, other predators and, and, and rats and other things. So people need to be aware of what they're getting into. We have um, information on our web page about how to deter those kind of animals and certain wildlife, but y you're inviting them in a little bit if you have right. those animals, so take a lot of care around that. And the, some of the best education, again, the, the tools that people can look for are websites, and obviously your book is a great start as well. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And what about the future of this in the Bay Area? Because obviously, you know, we've got a lot of urbanites here in uh, all across the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. What do you think the future is? I see it growing, certainly with vegetable gardens, and the mayor has called for this here in San Francisco, and he had the um, he had the garden at Civic Center Plaza for quite some time and has asked people to do this, and it seems that it's a it's growing trend. It's not a fad, and um, as far as animals go, they, they're going to come with it. Like I said, people are coming to take chickens out of our care all the time. They want fresh eggs. so <laughs> And they're good. Yeah, you know, people are motivated by their stomachs, as I am, you know? Um, that's one of the reasons why I have dairy goats. I love the milk, it is so good. Um, and, I, and I tell people that, yeah, it's a lot of work, but you know, you get these amazing benefits too. You know, you can start making cheese and make yogurt, it's amazing. Um, but um, but I, again, I think it's just going to be one of those things where it starts with the grassroots, you know, s some small numbers of people doing it, and then they tell their friends, and then they tell their friends. But luckily, what's going to happen with that is that they're going to be, you know, friends of theirs, so they can call and say like, "Hey, there's something wrong with my goat." What's you know? And so, so it's a growing trend. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a here growing to stay. trend, and it's, it's a, and it's going to be building community, right? Yeah. Absolutely here to stay. Yeah. Well, I have to thank my guests, Rebecca Katz and Novella Carpenter. You're thank you very much for joining me. You'll find more information on this new trend and lots of information on raising goats at kqed.org slash this week. So until next time, cheers and thank you. Cheers, thank you. Cheers to your thank fresh you. eggs. Thank you. <laughs>